we're going to talk about the second method for solving time-dependent problems. This is the problems involving spatial effects. So that means positional dependence is important. So we'll be dividing this section into two, plane wall and radial systems. Let's let's move on now. Let's let's do this. So the question is, so th we are interested in spatial effects. Okay? So the question is what do we do when the BO number is not smaller than 0 0.1. So that means we cannot use the lump capacitance method. So what are we going to do? So let's say we are interested in time dependent problem. So we need to use heat diffusion equation rho cp delta t by delta time. So we rearrange this equation d squared t by dx squared 1 over alpha, so alpha here is the thermal diffusivity, so dt by d time, okay? So now, now let's take a look at this. So this is the heat diffusion equation in one, one dimensional situation. Let's be more specific, let's say we want to analyze this particular problem here. Let's say we are interested in this one dimensional object shown in here, okay? We would like to we would like to write down the boundary conditions and initial conditions. So let's write down the initial condition first. Initial condition. Initial condition. What is the initial condition here? So initially, temperature is T i when T is the time is equal to zero. So that means for all the positions when T is equal to zero. So temperature is Ti. So this is the initial condition. And again, the, the time derivative is first order. So we only need one initial condition to be able to solve this fully. And then we need boundary conditions. Boundary conditions. And as you can see here, this is second order with respect to x. So this means I need two boundary conditions. And one of them is obviously at the interface, and which is the conductive flux is equal to convective flux. So minus K dt by dx when x equal to L. This is the conductive flux. H times T at L and T minus T infinity. This is the first boundary condition. The second boundary condition, since this is a symmetric system, since this is a symmetric system, I know that this there is going to be a maximum or a minimum in the center. So that means dt by dx at x equal to zero is equal to zero. This is due to you have a maximum or minimum in the center. All right. So now, so we have our boundary conditions. We have our uh, governing equation. So this is the governing equation here. And initial conditions, initial condition, and boundary conditions. So we already saw how to analyze. We have already seen how to analyze this using the partial differential equations and using the method of separation of variables. So the problem here is the boundary condition here is different from what we had before. So this analysis will be slightly more difficult. So let's, let's do that. However, since I just want to emphasize something, if we write these equations in terms of non-dimensional variables, and if we normalize these equations with respect to a certain length scale, we only solve this equation once and this equation will be universally valid. 
So it, that's why it is it is convenient to introduce a new concept. Let's call this as uh, normalization, normalization, and non-dimensionalization, non-dimensionalization. Okay, this is the idea. So now, so first of all, we want to shift our coordinate axis for temperature by t infinity. With this change, t infinity, basically we are taking t infinity as a reference. So that means that the outside temperature is zero, zero, zero outside. And inside we have t e t i minus t infinity. So we are referencing everything with respect to t infinity. That is one one change. And so we want to use the star indicates normalization. Normalization. Okay. So what is the the appropriate length scale for normalizing the temperature or sorry what is the appropriate temperature scale to normalize the temperature so the obviously it is the temperature difference between ambient condition ambient atmosphere and initial uh, initial temperature so which is t minus t infinity divided by ti minus t infinity this is the, this is the normalization this is the normalization for temperature. So for for position, if you go back to this figure, so it goes from zero to L. So I want to normalize this in a way that it will go from zero to one. So that means that means I would like to normalize X with L. And now for times time normalization. So what is the, the characteristic time to normalize this? So this is actually tricky. So this is actually normalization for time is going to come from the uh, from the original equation. So if we go back here, so in this equation, in the heat diffusion equation, T will be replaced by theta star. X will be replaced by X star. So that means T has to be replaced by a T star the definition of t star will come from this equality. So when you write down the non-dimensionalization, substitute them in this equation, it should be non-dimensional. So if you do that, so if you just try to do that, let's say d squared t by dx squared over one over alpha dt by dx. So now if you write this equation, we have if you take the derivative of this, so dt star is equal to dt by ti minus t infinity, right? This is the derivation. And if you d dt by dx, by dx, 1 over alpha dt by dt. Okay, this is the t. Okay, so now I would like to substitute. Uh, okay, oops. This is uh, t i minus t infinity. I would like to substitute these terms in here. So, so I'm going to say d t is equal to d t star minus t i minus t infinity. And Likewise, dx is equal to dx star multiplied by L. So I'm substituting everything in this equation. So we have d, d theta star multiplied by uh, ti minus t infinity divided by L times dx star divided by L times dx star is equal to 1 over alpha and dt is going to be equal to ti minus t infinity times d theta star 
and then we are going to have the T okay So if you rearrange this equation, so you can see these terms are going to cancel. So we have d squared theta star over l squared dx star squared 1 over alpha d theta star dt. So that means, that means the square theta star divided by the x star square L square over alpha the theta star the theta star over dt and we want this term to be dimensionless, right? So we want this term to be dimensionless. So we are calling this d square. So sorry, we are calling this this term. We want to replace this by dt star. So that means dt star is equal to dt times alpha over l square. So that means t star should be equal to alpha t over l square and this is called Fourier number okay this is called Fourier number so that means the non-dimensionalization for time is not obvious because we don't know the time scale for this problem there is no obvious time scale it has to come from the equation that governs this, uh, this process and we start to identify the normalization for the known variables that uh, that are obvious so in this case we have an obvious dimension for the object so we can normalize it with respect to position and that is for normalization for x and we know two temperature extremes ti and t infinity that will be normalization for temperature but we don't have a, temp a normalization for time that is going to come from this our heat diffusion equation and that is how we calculated the normalization for T star. So with this normalization, we will be getting, if we substitute everything back, if we substitute everything back, so we will be getting this, uh, this original equation. So let me write it a little larger here. So we'll be obtaining the heat diffusion equation in non-dimensional form d x star square is equal to d theta star divided by d t star so everything here is non-dimensionalized and then this is this is a uh, heat diffusion equation heat diffusion equation and a normalized version normalized and then we had initial conditions so we only had one initial condition and two boundary conditions. So we have uh, we have two initial conditions. So so, so one initial condition and two boundary conditions. The initial condition should be written in terms of now these variables. So t we should be replaced by theta star. So the initial condition was temperature at x when t is equal to zero is equal to ti so if you you if you want to write it down in terms of theta star uh, you use the definition of theta star which is t t uh, t minus t infinity ti minus t infinity so that means our dimensionless initial condition will be x star to 0 will go from uh, will be equal to 1 and then you write down the dimensionless form of the boundary conditions so that's going to be dt d theta star by dx star 
when x star is equal to zero is equal to zero that's the first boundary condition the second boundary condition is the conductive flux is equal to convective flux so that's going to be d theta star by the x star when x star is equal to one is equal to minus b o number times theta star times l t star okay so the bo number is defined as h over lk okay so here we don't have lc we have l so we must use l here by anal in this analysis not lc just l has to be used okay so this is important So the BO number definition for for spatial analysis, spatial uh, effects problems, we should do this. And then, so we will go through the this method of separation of variables. So we'll say theta star is product of a pure function of x. With a function which is pure function of uh, pure function of time, and then we have done it multiple times, so I'm not going to do this. So this could be a good exercise for you to follow. So now uh, you will be solving this equation, and you will be obtaining an infinite series, and this series will be as follows: exponential minus zeta n square t star cosine zeta n x star okay again x star and t stars are normalized position and time and so what's going to happen here so so you would like to find C, uh, this constant. So normally we were doing this, we were solving this with uh, Fourier series. However, we have a situation here because second boundary condition is, is stating that convective flux is equal to conductive flux. It means we don't have a constant at surface temperature. So that means the theta star by the x star which is evaluated at x, car, x star is equal to 1 and this is equal to minus bo number theta star which is evaluated at 1 and t star okay so now let's take a look at this equation so we will this is the general solution so far and we are trying to find cn's in the past we, we had a boundary condition let's say at t is equal to zero I have the I have a constant temperature and I could s easily obtain a Fourier series in this case the boundary condition is given in this form so that means it is more difficult so let's see why so if you take the derivative of the uh, this uh, this term so if you take the derivative of theta star with respect to x so we'll have the derivative you write down the derivative here so we'll have series goes from 1 to infinity uh, cn multiply by exponential minus zeta n square t star and our variable is with respect to x so the derivative of cosine is going to give us uh, zeta n multiply by minus sine zeta and x star okay so this is the derivative and on the left hand side on the right hand side so we have bo number minus theta star which is basically this expression here so i'm going to I'm going to write it out because we need to write it out here in a full expansion. So I'm going to substitute theta star and I'm going to I'm going to put x equal to 1 in that equation. So we have minus bo number 
infinite series goes from n goes from 1 to infinity cn exponential minus zeta n square t t star multiplied by cosine zeta n x star and this is evaluated at x equal to 1 okay this is evaluated at x equal to 1 so so that means if you if you zoom out a little bit if you zoom out a little bit so that means the equation we have here minus cn zeta n sine zeta n we are evaluating this derivative also at x equal to x star is equal to 1 so we substitute 1 here 1 here so and then these terms are the same so we are trying to find the equality here so these terms are going to cancel here this term and this term so we have um, this cn term zeta n and sine zeta n uh, we already substitute x equal to 1 this is equal to minus b o number c sub n cosine zeta n okay so this is the equality that we have here so again we have negative signs are going to cancel so you rearrange this equation we have zeta n sine zeta n divided by cosine zeta n is equal to b o number so and sine over cosine is tanj so we have zeta n tanj zeta n is equal to b o number so the solutions so there are infinitely number of infinite many infinitely many zeta n's that satisfies this equation for instance let's say b o number is 10 so let's say we are trying to solve x tangent x is equal to let's say 10 so there are infinitely many solutions that can satisfy this equation so these are the roots of these equations and we call these as eigenvalues so eigenvalues so these are positive roots of this equation this equation above here i'm going to this equation so if you plot x tangent x with your calculator so you are going to see something like this maybe i'll switch to powerpoint if you plot x tangent x so let's say bo number is equal to five if the bo number is equal to five uh, we can just uh, if the bo number is equal to five you can see if bo number is equal to five these are all positive roots here and you will have infinitely many roots so these are all zeta n's these are the roots so depending on the bo number you will get a different root so these are this graph you can you can of obviously you can calculate your own roots but they are already tabulated so let's go back here so these are the eigenvalues but these are in most cases these are tabulated okay if necessary you can solve it using a calculator or computer okay so now now we are not done yet so we need to continue so now what is what is next so now we obtain an expression for zeta n so this zeta n these are r positive roots and these are just numbers tabulated numbers they are tabulated for different bio uh, tabulated for different bio numbers so now let's say we do know what these are and and then we need to use another boundary condition so that is theta star 
at x star 0 is equal to 1. Okay. So if we substitute x equal to 0 in our original equation, let's go back to original equation. We are substituting x equal to 0. Cosine 0 is 1. So that means our equation will be uh, is equal to 1 is equal to n goes from 1 to infinity cn cn e to the 0 so this is sorry we are substituting t is equal to 0 e to the 0 is 1 cosine zeta n x star so that means 1 is equal to equation is 1 is equal to n goes from n goes from 1 to infinity cn cosine zeta and x star and cn's are the Fourier coefficients that we described earlier these are coefficients of Fourier cosine series coefficients of uh, Fourier cosine series so that means when you have an expression like this f of x is equal to n goes from 1 to infinity a n g n of x a n is equal to 0 to b f of x g n of x dx divided by 0 to b g n square x dx and if you carry out this algebra for f of x equal to 1 So you will find the CNs. CNs are equal to 4 times sin zeta n divided by 2 zeta n sine 2 zeta n. Okay. This is our second constant. So that means I do have the full, full solution now.